If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we continue with a series of interviews with old school legend Jerry Brainham. And in this video, you will hear Jerry talk about how Vince Geronda developed his unique exercises that he would teach at Vince's gym. Many of you are aware that at the time, during the golden era, Vince's gym was the mecca of bodybuilding during those golden years, with world-class bodybuilders flocking to train under the Iron Guru. And it was because of Vince's unique approach to bodybuilding and nutrition, and also, in particular, these unique exercises that he taught, that Vince was so well known for. Enjoy. Uh, Vince was right. He mm -hmm. said this over 50 years ago. And he made many statements like that, you know. Like I said, he was the first to push the crunch setup. I mean, he's the first to, uh, even though Larry, Larry Scott gets credit for the preacher bench, Vince is the one that brought that out. It wasn't, mm -hmm. I asked Vince about that. I remember, I said, Vince, how did you develop this preacher bench? You know, because Larry Scott did his old, his old bicep routine. Mm -hmm. He did, bumps and the, all, it was all preacher bench. Sometimes you do this thing called spider curls. We, it's like yeah. a special bench fit. It was like a peak, a concentration mm -hmm. thing. But I said, Vince, how did you get the idea for the preacher curl? He told me that he trained at uh, one of the first gyms in Los Angeles called the Easton Brothers Gym. Yep. And he said that uh, him, him and a, a training partner, he said, this is how he, he told me how he developed his repertoire of exercises. Because you see, with Vince, this is the th third thing that I was going to tell you. He, he used to take, he used to give you exercise that worked a specific part of the muscle, like mm -hmm. he, he, uh, a certain tricep exercise that would work this, let's say the lateral head, actually emphasize the lateral, this whole thing was like that. He, he liked to like, you know, emphasize specific parts of the muscle. This was very unique to Vince, nobody else did that. And I asked him, how did you come across that? And how did you develop that preacher man? He told me that at Easton Brothers Gym where he started training, he said him and his training partner used to experiment with different, and, and they tried different angles, different, uh, uh, you know, benches and stuff. And they next day, they'd see where the muscle was sore. And so that's how they knew which which part of the muscle these exercises affected. And that eventually caused them to develop this large repertoire of exercise that is specific to, uh, to certain, let's say, uh, parts of the muscle. As far as the preacher bench, that was developed by e the Easton brothers. Yeah. Vince himself did not develop that. Mm -hmm. That was they developed that. Vince carried it to his gym, and then Larry Scott, of course, fell in love with it. And today, it's sad they call it the Scott Bench, but mm -hmm. it should be because it, if you really want to be correct, you have to call it the Eastern, Eastern. Brothers. Yeah, but, correct. But, but nobody remembers the Eastern Brothers, yeah. so you know they 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 uh, that gym was. I think it was formed in 1930. Now it was one of the oldest gyms in LA, you know. But uh, uh, uh the, you know, so. You know, a lot of people who would hear me say this stuff, you know, exercise physiologists would be very skeptical because they say because of muscle innervation, you can't isolate a little small part of the muscle. It's nonsense. In other words, when you train the muscle, you're still working most of the muscle. You might think you're isolating it, but you're not. I can only tell you this. My experience, when Vince would give me, for, again, to use the tricep exercise as an example, when he said it hit the lateral head and I did that exercise, I was sore in only that part of my tricep. Mm. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to ar argue either way. All I can tell you is that Vince's exercises did seem to work or emphasize. Uh, I'm not saying they didn't work the rest of the muscle, but they did emphasize yeah. specific parts of the muscle. That really, they really did. That's amazing. That really yeah. is amazing. Um, so you're saying that Vince developed most of his exercises at Easton's gym at right. Easton Brothers Gym with a training partner. That's right. But you don't know who that training partner is. You told me the guy's name, but it's long forgotten. It was I, not a bodybuilder. Yeah. That's amazing. And then when he opened his gym in um, California, yeah, he basically, yeah, in 46, yeah. he basically, because I've seen, um, I've got a photo actually of Easton's gym from yeah. a Strength and Health magazine in not from 1951. Right. And what's amazing is that I immediately recognized the wooden benches 
Yeah. And some of the pulleys, and I even saw the preacher bench there. Yeah. yeah. And when I saw it, I swear, I the first thing that I thought is like, because I know the the history of, of Vince, um, that looks like Vince's gym, but it's not. <laughs> no. So, so Vince modeled his gym yes. to look like Easton's gym because Easton's gym because that's where he developed his exercises. Exactly. And right. he knew the specific equipment right. to hit those particular right. body parts. Exactly. I can tell you a funny story Vince told me. He was telling me that when he competed in the 50s, you know, in bodybuilding competition, he said he'd, he'd never win. He'd always get like third or fourth place. And they used to give him an award called Most Muscular. He said sometimes he'd win that. So, you know, he got exasperated after all. He's wondering why the guys that were beating him were bulky. You know, they had this in the 50s, had these big bulky physiques. One guy like, for example, like Malcolm Brenner was an example. He was a famous mm -hmm. boxer, I believe 50. Yeah. Big strong guy, he could deadlift 700 pounds, very big, bulky guy, big bulk though. Not much muscle, but here you have Vince who's already defined, you know, had the deep abs. And he wasn't place, he wasn't winning. So he went up to one of the judges, Vince telling me the story. He says he went up to one of the judges. He said, how come I'm always placing third and fourth? What's going on? He says, honestly, Vince, we don't know where to place you because there's nobody built like you. We're not used to have, seeing guys with veins all over their bodies and, and abs like that. We just don't know what to do with you. So ahead no, of his time. He was ahead of his time. Vince wasn't the standard. He was like, uh, he was like in the wrong place at the wrong, at the wrong time. Yeah. So, you know, because the, all the winners were big, bulky guys, they followed the trend and gave the, yeah. you know, to the big, bulky guys, you know. It's kind of sad when you think about it, you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I do hope you have enjoyed this seventh video interview with Jerry Brainham. As we have heard from Jerry Brainham, Jerry pinpoints the exact origin of the preacher bench being at the Eastern Brothers Gym. Now I have talked about the Eastern Brothers Gym before on this channel and that they actually did invent the preacher bench. But as a recap, the Eastern Brothers Gym was established in 1938 in Hollywood and is the gym where Vince Gironda learned to become a gym instructor. According to Jerry Brainham, Vince and his training partner, another bodybuilder, developed specific exercises to develop specific parts of the muscle. They would experiment, trying different equipment, different angles, finding out which muscle was sore and which part of the muscle was sore the next day, and in doing so developed a large repertoire of exercises. In both my opinion and Jerry Branham's opinion, the preacher bench should be called the Eastern Brothers bench, in all honesty. As mentioned, I have an image from 1951 showing the inside of the Eastern Brothers Gym and you can actually see the preacher bench standing at the corner in the back of the gym. This photo also shows that Vince actually modeled his own gym, Vince's gym, to look like Eastern Brothers Gym and to hold similar equipment to Eastern Brothers Gym because that is where he developed most of his exercises from with his training partner. I mean, we can see very similar equipment like the wooden benches, the cables. It looks like Vince's gym. Now, I was trying to find out who Vince's training partner was. And over the years, Vince actually did have several different training partners. And one such partner was actually called Clint Walker. He was an actor and bodybuilder, but unfortunately was not the training partner that Vince developed his exercises with. At least, that is the information I received from Jerry Branham. Nevertheless, video footage exists from Clint Walker training, and in particular, video footage of him performing the Preacher Curl, which I just had to share. What I find most fascinating about this video footage is his perfect execution of the Preacher Curl. Vince would advocate having the elbows rest on the top curved part of the preacher bench and that the top of the bench should be just below nipple level, unlike the distorted form we see used in today's modern gyms. Further, Vince advocated bringing the bar all the way up to the chin and bringing the chin forward to really cramp the bicep and develop what is called back then peak contraction. This is clearly demonstrated again expertly by Clint Walker and is a true statement to what Vince's training partners learned from Vince back in the day. Further, Vince's exercises, in Jerry Branham's opinion, 
did emphasize specific areas of the muscle like Vince claimed. Just flicking through the pages of any old muscle mag and you will see Vince's exercises being performed by everyone during the golden era. Such was Vince's impact on the golden era of bodybuilding. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and please leave me your comments and click the bell button to be notified of future videos. Make sure to subscribe to the Applied Metabolics newsletter by Jerry Brainham if you do wish to enhance your knowledge on bodybuilding nutrition. I know I have and I love it. It's especially helpful if you're a natural bodybuilder. More information is given in the description below. And again, that's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of our bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just the, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. 
we are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA, they have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster. A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there, it's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That this no! No way! That stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way! I'm not gonna give you, it's gonna kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have dragged so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.